Hello and welcome back to Volumes. In this episode I spoke about GigSafe with its creator Amelia Boyle. This episode is basically entirely about GigSafe and what it is, so I'm not going to explain what it is here. But what I do suggest is that you check out GigSafe on Instagram, it's GigSafe Glasgow, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks for listening. Yeah. So you ready to jump right in? Yeah, I've probably just repeat everything I've just said. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like let's start off by just like, who who are you? What are you doing? So GigSafe is the new project that I started in September. That's when the idea came to me. And um, it only actually started developing in December. Um, and I do it with my friends, Louis and Yana. And we form a team and basically put up a help desk at said gigs. And they're basically just there for anyone who needs a sense of security, like if they've been harassed, if they've been discriminated against, or if they're like anxious, then they can come up to us, talk to us, because it's usually a bit like nerve wracking sometimes going up to a member of security. So yeah. Um, usually like I leave this to like the end of the podcast, but lately I've like pushed it close at the beginning because I want people to like get involved as soon as possible. <laughs> but yeah, do you want to like? plug your social medias and like how to get involved and stuff like that now yeah so basically just follow it's gig safe glasgow on instagram twitter and facebook i think and the website is gig safe glasgow um dot co dot uk i'm pretty sure um and it's got all of our social medias tied into that as well awesome um so yeah do you want to tell me a bit about you and how you got like introduced to music and stuff like that so basically i was like raised in a really really musical family so like every single one of us plays an instrument so um i started playing like saxophone uh, in high school and then kind of got into drumming and i've just been in like loads of kind of musical groups and then i decided i wanted to like go into popular music so I did two years down at um, West College Scotland and managed to somehow get into third year at UWS <laughs> um, and hopefully going to graduate um, in I two love that years. word, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully like, graduate. yeah, hopefully. Um, but yeah, no, um, basically, the kind of thing that made me start it was they make you, well, they don't, you do a third year project. They make you, <laughs> they make you it, you it was forced. Um, you do a third year project and you have to kind of pick something that's not really in music at the moment. So I, I picked this um, and then it kind of just became a hobby and now it's my actual like wee baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you I don't something. I don't tell anyone it's a uni project because I don't really think of it as just that anymore. It's yeah. like my actual, like I, I want to pursue this, like it's really proud of it right now but I, I don't tell anyone it's a uni project <coughs> unless it's on a podcast unless it's, it's on a podcast I, everywhere. Just, yeah no no one tell anyone <laughs> it's a secret <laughs> yeah um but yeah so like even though it came out it was kind of like birthed out of uni what sort of like fundamentally inspired you to create this more than anything else out of uni well i just honestly um it started off um being kind of woman based and like everyone's kind of had it everyone's kind of had a like every female i know has had a guy kind of rub themselves up against them at a mm. gig and it's just it's unpleasant you don't want it but then since it was i did start this off as a uni project had to do loads of research and then i found out loads of stuff that like it's one in four disabled people won't go to a gig because they're That's insane, yeah it's it? mental because they're too they're, they're too scared they're gonna get abused and they're they're too afraid to go up to security themselves so that's why i kind of started making it a bit more diverse and just kind of aimed it at vulnerable groups um yeah. so that we'd be like a lot friendlier and like a mm. lot more um better for like people to approach if they don't want to approach security so yeah before we started like recording i was saying how like i'd I'm so naive to this because I have no like disabilities. I have I'm not like it's weird to say, but I'm probably like just as a white man. There's nothing that anyone could really do yeah, to make me feel yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. So I wouldn't notice how vulnerable people can be at uh, be in gigs uh, or a gig in oh my god in a gig situation. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. But like I actually got I got a message um the other day on the instagram account i won't uh, say who it was but um it was this guy and he was a he's a white male and he was basically saying that 
he's been groped by women at gigs and really? stuff, but he's basically kind of seemed to like kind of shrug it off. Mm. And but that's also quite that's, that's like, also it's quite bad though. He has that's, to do that yeah, almost. It's like, it's kinda, it's like toxic masculinity. Like. So that, mm, that's yeah, another yeah. thing. So that's why basically I, I always broadcast this as like it's literally we're there for anyone with, mm. who needs a sense of security. Anyone that just like needs to have a chat or like sit down with us that's so yeah yeah so how do you like uh integrate into uh gigs is it just sort of like a desk so basically yeah um we're actually trying to figure out better ways of doing it so we've actually only done two events uh they've been at sleazy's um and basically they have tables like all around the side of the venue uh with the couches and it's actually it's plenty of room um so two of us uh it's only ever been two of us at a time uh, sit there but we realized uh, we didn't have the issue at the first one but we had it at the second one that it was a lot busier mm. and you could tell that people thought we were just sitting at the table they couldn't see mm, that we yeah. had um things so uh, we're trying to think of ways to let people know that we're actually at the gig so i'm gonna speak to people like t-shirts T-shirt, t-shirts yeah, I want hoodies. Work. I really want yeah. hoodies. Um, but like, even if we like speak to the band that's about to play, like announce that where we mm, are in the yeah. room, or like one of us will be at the table, the other one will be like handing out flyers, kind of directing people. So we're just trying to brainstorm ways to like make it a lot better, so more people know that we're actually there because we yeah. realised that we were sitting in the corner and people actually didn't really know what we were doing. Without like uh, specifically saying like who's come up to you and they're like they're particular problems but what are the kind of things that people have come up to you and, and like discussed with you so literally it's actually good that no one has had a problem right at the two events because the first one i'm not gonna lie it was pretty quiet um <laughs> but so great way to kick it off but um no but that's good like i'm mm. happy with no one coming up to us and mm, the kind of yeah. way that i like to put it um if no one comes up to us um like while we're at an event, I think that's actually a good thing because I think someone could have clocked on that we're there and maybe not done a bad thing. Mm, like, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. so I, I like to think of it that way. So it's a bit more positive yeah. thinking. It's kind of like how you feel less, de- like you feel deterred from stealing yeah. from a store when uh, there's like a security guard there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not that I'm saying that I want to steal things from stores, <laughs> but you know what I mean. No, yeah, no, I get you. But um, basically, everyone that's like came up to us has been like, oh, that's amazing. And they've taken flyers mm. and it's been like really positive. Um, so yeah no um, it's good that nothing bad's happened though it's strange that basically <clears throat> the entire business model that that's built upon is people not coming up to you yeah like you want people not to come up to I you i know it's weird because so it's just because people have been asking me being like oh my god who have you helped and i'm like no one but like no I, I'm, I, I'm it's good that i've not had to yeah but, but maybe you have just not directly yeah like yeah. you probably indirectly helped lots of people already mm. yeah yeah which is so. really interesting um so what are you, what's the plans for the future and then where are you heading? Well, um, more gigs, <laughs> more gigs, hopefully. Um, are you got, getting on a bigger team so you can like cover more gigs? Yeah. So we've kind of came across the issue already that, um, see, we all have jobs. So, um, oh, and we all I hate go, the real world. Man. I know we all have Sucks. jobs. We all go to uni and, um, it's actually quite hard to take so many days off work. So, and ob- like, I quite like for every single time that we do one, that at least two of us are there. I wouldn't mm. want to like do one by myself. Yeah. Um. Because like if we have to go away and help someone, then we need someone staying at the desk. Yeah. Um. And also one person is sort of vulnerable themselves anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. But um. No, I don't really know. We've got there's a couple that we've <clears throat> been asked to do. Um. And I'm kind of talking to people about like doing theirs as well, but. Hopefully, it just starts to gradually get bigger. When you say like people are asking you, so most people are reaching out to you. So you're not reaching out to them. Basically, I contacted a few venues. Um, I got patched by a few venues, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. Sleazy's got back to me, and they were the guy was like really nice over the phone. He was like really up for it. Um, so basically, I've been in there. He basically just said to be in there like twice a week on their kind of home uh, in house kind of right. shows. Yeah, yeah um and then <laughs> after so yeah, you've got like a base yeah yeah up, huh? um so residents and sleazies um, <laughs> but no but basically um after we announced that we were in sleazies i started getting the emails so it's kind of been like a snowball effect right and um like i've been invited to i think it's three more and then in, in the talks with another one mm. um but yeah no uh hopefully it gets bigger 
more people so it's just like a regular thing but yeah. i understand that venues can be really small and don't have room for a desk yeah so we're trying to think of ways to be there at the back and we're trying to think of like kind of to be kind of subtle so maybe get like wristbands and like stand at the back of a gig and people can like identify us with that or like hoodies or something when people reach out is it the 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 venue or the promoter promoter right it's the promoter um or like maybe one of the bands um right. But they usually, they, they've emailed me on the GigSafe account or like just messaged me on the kind of Instagram and right. asked me to do it. So, yeah. Not bad. Um, are there other ways you want to be like integrated into gigs? Not just like, I, I obviously don't know how you would do it, <laughs> but like just like other than just someone there. Like, is there like maybe, I don't know like an app or something you could have oh, well oh oh <laughs> i'm onto well, something <laughs> well basically um my original uni idea wasn't to do the help desk thing like oh it's like bad or anything like it it just wasn't it, the idea it, it, the first idea was an app and <laughs> then i realized how hard it was like mm. I've, got, I've got no computing skills whatsoever right yeah um so i just no. i i like wrote my whole written thing the three thousand word written thing is on an app um and then like called gig safe and i had like i know exactly what it would do i just didn't know how to build it right. so i phoned up this um app developing company like in scotland and then the guy was just like all right okay amelia um sounds like a good idea you've got here yeah and i was just like all right thanks and then he was just like so usually we start off about 50 grand and i just like <laughs> started like <laughs> coughing and he was like are you okay and i was just like yeah, yeah yeah he was like what's your budget and i was just like 250 <laughs> pounds <laughs> um and he was just like oh right okay and was, so then i had to like 50 be, grand 50, that was a big company though um Aww. but i didn't realize so um but one day yes so I guess I've, if you're not in that field, you don't really know what a big company yeah. is, but 50 grand. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a hard one. So yeah, no, that's that's a 2021 kind of idea. Do you want to give like a little sneak preview of what the app would do and how it would work? Uh, I don't want anyone to steal it. So mm, I have, true. I've got a cheap patent on it, but um, no, hopefully no one steals it. So that's a 2021 podcast 2021, right 2021, but I think mostly... Um, because I, I was told that it might not be as effective um, if like someone's getting harassed in the crowd and stuff, but um, I think it would be really effective in the sense though of someone with autism if they know that they've got like a kind of alert button or something or like someone yeah, seeing yeah. that they're uh, it just it's in a lot of depth, but it's all a big secret. So mm, I'm getting the gist, <laughs> and the gist sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah um so like out with apps and actually being there is there any other ways you could integrate into it or are you just not thought about it yet just not <laughs> we're trying to build a, a platform first and trying to get the name out that's why we've actually tried to plaster posters absolutely mm. everywhere that we can and how's that going um yeah it's good um the only place that i've had an issue with the um yeah throw them under the bus yeah, say the name no, actually, <laughs> actually no i'm not gonna um you but, censor yourself then yeah no but it's, it's been good like everyone's been like really up for like having them there and then people have been like asking like questions about it yeah and, uh, like, it'd be strange if someone didn't yeah. want it there it would it yeah. would be but um I, it, I do understand in the sense that it can it could make the venue look bad and i get that but because they, they it might actually kind of give them give people an idea that oh my god bad things happen here like and that's I mean? why they need something like and that. that's why they need mm. something like that but like and i just need to convince get, yeah. venues that it's like a widespread issue and it's not like yeah. it's, it's not them <laughs> but the irony is that probably stuff do like that happen in those venues mm -hmm. they happen in all venues they happen everywhere yeah yeah, they yeah happen exactly in the street, yeah. you know what i mean i know so yeah mm -hmm. this, yeah, yeah. It, it makes no sense then i, I know it's but not. it's it is it's bad publicity for them but yeah. it's silly not to to get involved exactly are there other things like this that exist well yeah there are um but so there's like they're not in glasgow i don't know if they're in scotland at all but i think they're i think it might be english organizations there's um safe gigs for women they're down in england i'm pretty sure uh, they're doing really well i think um and they're basically uh, that's about like sexual harassment against women mm. at gigs i'm pretty sure and then um girls again just along the same lines right. and i think they're down in england 
and other than that I couldn't really find much the only other thing that's just came up is that safe cabs thing what's that it's like uh, I'm not really sure I think I, I messaged the person about it um, asking if they wanted to like be on the website but I'm pretty sure it's just kind of doing background checks on taxi drivers making mm. cabs safer for people on the way home that's good um, but that's the only other thing in Glasgow that is kind of along the lines of it right. is that really... based in Glasgow That is, that's literally just started I think like a week ago um, mm. I saw the first post go up um, but other than that I've not really seen much about that like there's gig buddies which isn't that's for people that like pairs um someone up with another person with a learning disability or uh, autism and it basically pairs two people up that have got like really similar interests so they can right. go to the gig together right and it's like it's a really wholesome thing yeah that's that's yeah, amazing. yeah yeah but that's like uh, there's not too much more that i know that's like kind of happening in glasgow you don't realize how complex and diverse these like cultures are mm-hmm. and until you're in them do you like mm-hmm. i would never know anything about uh, gig buddies until you said that yeah uh, but that's amazing um you said like beforehand you were like researching uh like cases of people being harassed at gigs and stuff like that so is this a really prevalent thing that occurs at gigs well yeah um but a lot of the time i guess people don't report it so yeah. people, there's a lot of things that obviously people probably don't know about but um i did look into quite a lot of stuff and there was one and it was like I think this guy, the band was from America and the guy literally stopped the whole gig and like went down and like took the guy off the girl. Um, and I, I like put that, I, I, I like mentioned like the kind of quote on the website as well. And it's just like the mad stories that I was finding. Um, but um, that Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes guy, he mm. does like, he dedicates like a whole song to like women so they can crowd surf without like men. Ah. Being, so it's like, yeah, that's another like kind of positive thing that like they're, from the kind of band's perspective mm. that they're yeah, making yeah. it a safer place for women. <clears throat> how do you encourage people to like speak up if they do get harassed? Like how do they get people to come to you and talk about it? Well, uh, that's a hard one because like you can't force it mm. out of someone. But basically, we're, that's the thing that I was like saying earlier. We need to try and think of a better way to like let people know that we're actually mm. there. Because I realised the first couple of times we did it, I was a bit shy, so I didn't, like, announce it, because I didn't actually know who was in charge, um, like, I didn't know who, like, the promoter was, yeah. um, so I didn't, like, mention to, like, any of the bands or anything to announce us, but I'm gonna build up the courage um, <laughs> on Thursday and be like, please mention that we're in the right corner or something like that, so then people know to come to us, Yeah. Um, and other than that, that's about it, yeah. But how do you, like, create that sort of, like, safe space? Maybe I'm, like, pushing your corner here to answer a question, but, like, what what would like make someone go yeah actually i want to i want to go to them and i want to talk about this because this is what just happened and you know what i mean yeah that's a good point um because that's what i was thinking about um asking the venue prior to that like where they would have a safe space mm. then a lot of these places probably don't, don't so it'd be like oh do you want to go outside then. do you want to go to the toilet but it, mm. it, it's honestly like that is, that's a hard question to answer just because like how how do i know that they can trust me mm, yeah that's true um, yeah i've got a pvg that does sound like a very trustworthy thing people need to listen <laughs> um so yeah how out with like following and stuff is there any way like people can get involved are you like building uh, a, a community of well, people to, yeah like, so or is it right now just the three? It's the three of us, but it's obviously getting harder um, since we have jobs and we're all yeah. in um, full-time courses um, that it's quite hard juggling it all. So I spoke to this girl at this sexual health, no, sexual harassment uh, concert, concert, oh my God. Concert. <laughs> Conference. You're gigging um, in the brain. <laughs> yes, um, and she was kind of asking about it kind of been like oh you build wait what was it sorry a, a sexual uh, harassment sexual harassment like conference it was right. a conference like talking about it right um and she kind of was like asking about if i was building the team and i do want to but i'd have to be able to like trust the person yeah, how kinda. do you do that how do you find people I that are guess I just, I can't, i'd have to get to know them they'd have to get a pvg as well but um mm. yeah no i do want i do definitely want to build on it because how do you be, get a pvg just apply online. 
that's it yeah it's i like how like, you're like taking it so seriously <laughs> but you just apply online just, that's it's, it. it's like 60 quid though so but like oh it that lasts. that proves yeah. how dedicated you are yeah yeah um that but trust, um probably. yeah no i do want to build it because it'll obviously this is like just the start and we've got to quite a few events so far so see if it builds and stuff it's gonna be i mean gonna end up getting sacked so <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so as it does build and you've got like way more gigs to go to and like most gigs occur on the weekend you can't go to like two gigs in one night what happens then oh, that's why we need to build yeah the, build i'm guessing you've team. not encountered anything like that yeah, or you're, no, you're not no, that's not, not on the schedule we're not that popular yet but like <laughs> um yeah no it's that is a hard one but it would just mean see even if we build it build build it, it build, yeah. yeah good english um i do music um <laughs> but see if we manage to like make the team like four people then that's two events do you know what i mean if yeah we were all free that night so. yeah yeah it's, it's a hard one and it'd be a shame to like miss out on events because mm. then you'd feel bad obviously being like yeah. oh shit some, or something could have happened or something uh what venues are you in right now like what venues do you have connections to right now so, or do you not want to talk about that it's just so at the moment uh it's sleazy's um that we've been to um i've got one coming up in ivory blacks the 13th note um maybe broadcast and then i can't remember i think someone is in talks with me about one <laughs> but i don't know they've not booked it yet right but they want me there right so. okay um and so you're saying like when promoters reach out if a promoter reaches out and they've got a gig with a band playing uh, on glasgow one friday and in edinburgh the next friday would you go with that promoter to like edinburgh or are you just staying at like specifically just glasgow right now well the account is called gig safe glasgow but i probably yeah. would like i don't see any issues with me doing that um, yeah because the posters don't say gig safe glasgow so i could just bring the same posters yeah um but yeah oh, no because that's what ahead. yeah that's what like one of the uh girls asked me at the conference as well being like oh would you because they were from edinburgh they were like oh would you um build it out to edinburgh mm-hmm. and if i got big enough like yeah yeah that sounds good mm-hmm. uh i love what you're doing um some weird stuff does happen at gigs yeah yeah have you ever seen anything weird yourself Mm, not really but like obviously like this is where it actually becomes quite like hard like see mosh pits Mm. like see if someone came up to us like and they've actually like decked it or like hurt themselves or like something has really like hurt like or something's happened to them in the mosh pit like that's also like a health and safety thing so like Mm. in that sense we probably wouldn't be able to help them but then aren't you you're a pretty good point of contact yeah, we're good. Like, yeah, we'd be able to. Go. We'd pr- we'd be able to guide them yeah. in the right way, but like in that kind of sense. But I've not. I've never seen anything bad happen myself, which is good. But it doesn't mean it's not happening. So. Yeah, um, I was gonna say that that's awesome, but I mean, what am I? I don't <laughs> yeah, know no. how to word it. Uh, but it is awesome that people like that you haven't seen it or, or encountered it. Yeah. Because that is that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um. But nevertheless, it's unfortunate like that something like this has to exist because this is probably way more prevalent than what meets the eye. Yeah. Um, um, so I was I was like talking to one of my pals, um, who's in a band, and he was basically saying, um, that it should just be the normal like for you guys to be at a gig yeah, kind of yeah, thing, and yeah. then it, like even because he was like, oh, it'll just end up getting all of the bad guys like out forever, and it's like, that's mm. kind of a nice way to think about it. Yeah. It, it kind of is like i know it's a weird analogy but it's kind of like you, you no one wants to come out of crime in front of like the police yeah I know. you do feel a bit weird in front of the police i know i can't even like cross at a red man in front of the police <laughs> <laughs> like so um, yeah no but like that's yeah. the kind of way that we do, we also don't want to seem like party poopers but at the same time we want to be responsible for, like foreign yeah. people so but also you don't really need to like with that analogy of like breaking the law in front of the police, just don't break the law. I yeah, guess. yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Yeah, just don't, don't cross yeah, that red man. <laughs> don't harass people at gigs, and you will not feel guilty. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, so you, there's n- like no situation in which you should feel like a guilty person for like, yeah. oh, I've, I've, I'm ruining people's fun. No, mm-hmm. like you're absolutely doing a good thing. Yeah, exactly. We just we want to 
<laughs> have the most kind of like positive take on like it all and it's got a really positive response and like as I was yeah. saying earlier that's kind of like really good that maybe Glasgow's actually like a really good place and everything or maybe mm. everyone knows that there's like a lot of issues and they yeah. need to be sorted so yeah no yeah I don't know I've seen some weird stuff yeah, like, oh, I, know. I love it but I love Glasgow I love gigs but I know mm. things need to change yeah. I think this is a very uh, a needed service mm-hmm. that that should exist. Um, I, th- I had something I was going to say there, and I, I fell out my mind, <laughs> but I'll come back to it if I remember it. But yeah, as someone that loves gigs, what are some good gigs you've been to? Oh, good gigs! Uh, You're breaking a sweat. You're like, oh, how uh, do I name it? Um, I was at one last week. Oh, I was at my brother's gig last week. They were a band called Weekend Date. They're quite all right. Um, and then I was at... What? Were you, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was at... I'm literally at like three gigs a week and I can't remember like any of them. Who have I been to see recently? I've been to quite a few. I was at... I went to go see Muse over summer. That was amazing. Oh, where was that? In Manchester. <laughs> Travelled ah. all the way down. Saw Blossoms over summer as well. Um, down in Stockport we kind of like to travel to gigs it's quite good mm. but um, I'm at gigs like all the time I yeah. just can't I, for some reason I actually can't remember anyone do you prefer seen. like the small intimate gigs or like the big stadiums oh no I don't really like big stadiums that much but like see like I don't think Muse are ever going to play King Tut's like again so <laughs> yeah I doubt <laughs> <Yeah>. that one <laughs> um, but no um, no I do prefer smaller ones because it's just a nicer vibe yeah it, it feels a bit more special um, and I'm usually at ones that are I've been to quite a few at Tuts recently just because it's the kind of New Year's um, one and I was I played one as well um, last week in the New Year resolution kind of are you in a are you in a band? I am in a band, but I wasn't playing with my band. I was playing with um, a solo artist called Rebecca Kirk. Do you want to plug your band? Well, yeah, well, you've not got a name, so no. Oh, that, you <laughs> can't got, really plug a band. Yeah, yet. I know. We've got a full, we've, well, we've got like almost a full set kind of going, but no name. No it's name. It's the hardest part about being in a band for some reason. So you're just existing. You're just going on we've, stage like we are us, and we've we will been just play. sleeping on it since June. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just gonna sleep on it. So, so you, yeah, you can't really <laughs> plug your band, but you can uh, definitely plug Gigsafe. Yeah. So everyone, check out Gigsafe. Yeah. Uh, do you have any closing words? Um, stay safe. To stay, stay safe. Stay safe. The motto. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on. This has been super interesting. Thank and you again, for like, having me. This is an awesome thing you're doing. Well done. You should be proud. Thank you.